Denali National Park is massive. Everything is supersized. From the glaciers to the grizzlies to the Great One, that's the name the Alaskan native ancestors gave to North America's tallest peak. At 20,000 feet, Denali is the heart of the park and towers over more than 6 million acres of subarctic wilderness. We've explored this park numerous times in different seasons. When it comes to dog sledding, panning for gold, escaping a fall into a crevasse, or landing a plane on a glacier, it's tough to rank our favorite adventures. But stick around because our number one pick is something you can't do anywhere else on Earth and almost everyone has the skills to do it. This is our top 10 all-time favorite things to do in Denali. And starting at number 10, riding the bus. We know what you're thinking. A bus? Yeah. Denali has only one road. It's 92 miles long and much of it is close to regular traffic in the summer. So the park's camper buses are a great way to kick back, relax, and enjoy the wild scenery. For this trip, I brought these with me and you have no idea how excited I am to use these. Spotting and scanning for wildlife is maybe my favorite thing in the entire world. And now, nothing will elude me. <laughs> We're not on the bus more than 20 minutes when we spot the granddaddy of them all. He's got a nice big hump and he's this really beautiful golden blonde color. Oh, what man. he's doing right now is he's just kind of digging around down there. He's looking for food. One of the reasons why grizzlies have that big hump and black bears don't is because they are doing so much digging. Over time, they build up this giant wad of muscle and it sits right up there. It's how we can tell those guys apart. It's always a thrill to catch a glimpse of wildlife. And that brings us to number nine, spotting the big five. We're talking animals, big animals. Moose, caribou, bears, wolves, and doll sheep. It was for the sheep's protection that the park was established back in 1917. We spotted these guys on one of our first hikes in the park. Their massive horns can take seven to eight years to grow. Males can get up to 250 pounds. That's a pretty big sheep. These guys can survive some insanely harsh climates. They've got these thick white coats, which makes them easy to spot, and it also helps them brave the Alaskan winters. On another visit, we weren't in the park more than 30 minutes when we scored another big sighting, caribou. Oh, we've got some on the left here. Pull over. Wow. Sweet, okay. Look at the size of those antlers. Oh man. Check this out. Caribou often roam in large herds in the summer. Both males and females sport antlers, and they can move too, running at speeds of up to 48 miles per hour. Later, on the same stretch of road, we got lucky again. Oh, moose, check this out, Jack, moose. So we have a moose up here on the side of the road. That is such a big animal. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. There are about 2,000 moose in the park. Males are easier to spot because of their massive antlers. They stick close to lakes and marshes where they can graze on the vegetation. They tend to hide, but here in Denali, you get to see them a lot more often because there's so many of them. And beware, females like this one can weigh up to 1,100 pounds, and when they are disturbed or with their young, they can be fast and aggressive. One of the big five that's getting harder to spot is the wolf. Denali used to be one of the best places in the world to see wolves, especially along the Denali Park Road. Since hunting is allowed outside the park, their numbers have drastically declined. If you're lucky, you'll see a lot of wildlife in Denali, but for your safety and theirs, keep a safe distance. There is one animal where getting up close and personal is not only allowed, <laughs> it's encouraged. At number eight, one of our all-time favorite things to do in Denali is to visit the only dog sled kennel in the national park system. Sled dogs are a big part of Denali. The first pack was created in 1922, and their role then and now is the same, to bring goods and people into the harsh wilderness in the middle of winter. So Alaskan Huskies have been bred and trained to pull sleds and to want to run more than anything else for thousands of years. So it's in their blood. In the summer, visitors get to watch as the park exercises the dogs. It's a crazy scene. I mean, these dogs are getting strapped to this sled. <laughs> And they get pumped. I mean, they're howling, they're barking, they're pulling at the reins already. And then Jessica says, let's go. And just like that. Oh, here they go, here they go, here they go. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. 
the dogs can run up to 18 miles per hour, but they prefer to cruise at about eight miles an hour. In the winter, they travel up to 30 miles a day. Holy oh my cow. gosh. Oh my gosh. And then they just stop. Each spring or summer, a new litter of puppies is born at the kennels, and their training begins almost immediately. We start putting them through what we call puppy stress testing, and we hold them on their backs, and we hold them upside down, and we tickle their toes, and all of that is helping to stimulate the neurological development and help them respond to minor stresses and get over it. The dogs can run up to 18 miles an hour, but they prefer to cruise at about eight. Oh, here they come. Oh, look at them. Look at them. <laughs> we sit in a nice little circle, and they put the puppies in the middle, and we just get to play with them. Come here. Yeah, give me some scratches. Yeah. So while this snuggle is extremely fun for us, it's important for these dogs. They need to learn how to socialize with people as well as each other. You kind of throw them all in the mix together and they learn how to work together. This is amazing. <laughs> Spoiler alert, we'll be meeting up with these guys later, but first, we're ready to strike it rich. <laughs> yup, at number seven, we're panning for Alaskan gold. Denali was a booming mining camp before it became a national park. There have been a lot of different gold rushes in Alaska's history, and every time somebody finds gold, it of course ignites this passion and lust for more gold. Well, what brought a lot of people back in 1906, 1907, there was a mini gold rush here. It was known as the Kantishna Stampede, and back then there was no road, and people had to travel 185 miles from Fairbanks with a year's worth of supplies. Between the bugs, pears, and bitterly cold winters, gold prospecting was dangerous. Today, it's much easier. So the thought here is, is that if there are any gold flakes on any of these rocks, you're washing it out with the water, they sink down to the bottom because they're heavier and they're revealed as you move the thicker, bigger rocks out of the way. Sounds simple enough, but even if you find gold, you might not recognize it. Real gold doesn't necessarily shine, but something else sure does. So fool's gold is actually a different type of rock called mica. It looks very pretty. It fools you into thinking it's gold, but it's not. And it's much, much softer and will actually break up in your hands. I'm finding a lot of mica. I wish mica was worth something. Colton, I think I've got something. It's I, shiny. You were just talking about fool's gold. Don't <laughs> take me for a fool. All right, come on. Big money, big money, big money, big money, big money. Nothing. I look over at Colton and he's just mean mugging his pan. One of the things that I pride myself on is being able to spot things like wildlife. So if there is a tiny little scrap of gold in here, even if it's small, I'm gonna find it. Oh no! Ah! I give my pan one big swish and I spill it all over my leg. <laughs> what if there's gold in there? See, I would have been the kind of guy to come here in 1906 and within two hours of panning say, oh, did I make a big mistake? <laughs> Just not panning out. <laughs> <laughs> that joke was gold. <laughs> so even though we struck out on Striking Rich, there's a more priceless adventure awaiting us when we discover number six, hiking and camping out in the back country. You need a permit for overnight trips into the wilderness. We're told a mama grizzly and her cub were spotted here this morning, so we have to be on our toes. We've got tons of room to spot things. So even if we do see a bear, We've got plenty of maneuvering room to go around him. But above all of that, the thing that could get you in trouble the most out here are storm clouds that look like those over there. We're keeping our eyes on them. As we hunt for a safe place to cross the river, black clouds keep pushing in. You can feel the wind shift. Yeah, it's yeah, coming it's, this way it's and blown now, out. Just keep our eyes on it. I don't want to be caught in a storm in a bad spot. Look at that. Those are some mean, mean looking clouds. As we're hiking, we start to see something come out of the brush. We've got a caribou right in front of us. He's kind of in our path almost. He definitely noticed us. These guys seem to be so curious. Just getting close enough to kind of get a whiff of us or something. And then he moves on his way. All right, and that brings you back down again to yep. reality. 
I think we keep on moving. Yeah, you ready for some rain? Yeah, All I right. am. <laughs> As we're hiking along, I see something on the ground. Those are wolf tracks. Oh boy. Seeing one of these guys would be incredible. Look at those claws. Right there. Wow. From the size of this paw, this is a big, big wolf. And this track is fresh. We know they're there. I mean, you see evidence of wolves and moose. Whoa! Oh, did that make me jump? Whoa! Whoa. Big, big thunder <laughs> crackling down, probably on the other side of Divide Mountain. I would take a wolf, a grizzly, and a moose over getting caught in a lightning storm. We set up our camp just seconds before the sky opens up. Exploring the backcountry and seeing wildlife up close is incredible, but nothing compares to seeing the park from above. At number five of our favorite adventures in Denali, flying to and landing on a glacier. As we're making our way into the mountains, we start to see these jagged, gnarly looking peaks. This massive glacier is littered with crevasses. Looking at the summit of Denali, the tallest peak in North America just gives you goosebumps. Denali Base Camp is where the majority of climbers begin their journey up the nearby peaks. Base Camp sits at an elevation of 7,200 feet atop the massive 44-mile-long Cahiltna Glacier. As we enter the valley, our pilot's circling around so we can get low enough to land on this perfect little airstrip on the glacier. We do a couple flybys to double check that no crevasses have opened up near the runway and that no avalanches are imminent. Oh, oh my gosh. Woo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I take one step out. Whoa. And my jaw literally drops. These oh, are mountains, man. dude. Oh, These man. These are mountains. Wow. This massive glacier is littered with crevasses, huge holes in the ice, some as wide as a school bus and hundreds of feet deep. And this brings us to number four, learning how to escape what could be a deadly fall into a crevasse. Oh, man. Ooh. You see that? Oh, yeah. That is what we call a crevasse. If the snow hadn't melted from that little hole right there, you would never see that coming. This is our training ground, a huge crevasse more than 100 feet deep. To simulate a fall, we're going to be rappelling at least 40 feet down over the lip. And in addition to learning how to climb out, the one that didn't fall in will be bearing the entire weight of the one that did. All right, time to get lowered into a crevasse. You better have me. I've got you. You're not <laughs> going anywhere, don't you worry. Colton will be holding my body weight, but we also have a second safety rope. Oh, man. You got it, don't worry, <laughs> just go for it. Woo! Now I'm just waiting for that drop when Colton goes into self-arrest. He did it flawlessly because I didn't drop at all. Ugh. I got him, I got him. Ooh. I'm dangling at least 80 feet above the bottom of the crevasse, and for all we know, the snow could be concealing another drop right. below that. Next thing I gotta do is put my foot loop on. What this thing does is it allows me to step up and basically climb this like a ladder. Now, I don't know how long I can stay in this position. Oh man. Because I can feel Jack dangling on the other end. It hurts. Oh, it's definitely digging into my hips. How you doing, Jack? Finding a rhythm, I think. It's no easy feat, is it? All right. And I was it. It was pretty nuts. I mean, at first, I was kind of flailing all over the place, but once I got in that groove, it was pretty easy. Once we both get the hang of this, it's time for the real thing. At number three, climbing a snow-packed mountain. This peak is called the control tower because it just hovers over the runway where these planes land. Our hike to the nearly 9,000 foot mountain is just under two miles and it is literally riddled with a maze of crevasses that we need to avoid. 
Trouble is, some of them are hidden under a blanket of snow, which is why we are hiking 40 feet apart, just in case one of us falls in. Right now we're starting to do a little bit more uphill. You can feel it. As we hike, we're seeing giant crevasses at just about every bend. Definitely unsettling. And we can hear the ice crack as well. And the sound is nothing short of eerie. And then we hear avalanches in the distance. Avalanches are common in Denali. Heavy snow, ice, and rock frequently thunder down the steep mountainsides. I take one moment and look behind us. Some weather is moving in on the top of the mountain behind me right now. Out here, weather dictates everything and is gonna dictate how far we can go on this climb. Getting stuck out on one of these mountains is no joke. After two hours, the peak is about another mile up, straight up. <sighs> to our left, we have gigantic crevasses that drop down we don't know how many hundreds of feet. Oh man, that is a deep crevasse. And then to our right, we have a gigantic avalanche debris field. As we're walking, you just see these huge holes next to you. And then as you put your ice axe into the snow, it just slides in easy. Ooh. Which means there could be a crevasse just under the surface. After another 45 minutes of carefully winding our way through this maze, we've got 200 feet to climb, and it's difficult, even in the best conditions. It's a little spooky. There is fog everywhere. It's really hard to see where we're going. Oh, man. Ooh. Every step we go, it gets steeper. And then we turn around and see the weather rolling in. We are caught up in a storm on the top of this mountain right now. We're at the place where a massive glacier separates from the mountain, and these crevasses can be very deep and unstable. But we have to get across to reach the top. Whoa. Oh. My heart is starting to pound. Whoa. 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 Underneath you, you see all these holes that are just really deep. And then now peering over to the other side where we're about to go is a giant, giant cliff. Oh man, all right. I take a step up and I peer over the ridge line and the mountain seems to just drop. Whoa, this is much steeper than I thought it was from down at the bottom. Whew. The snow clouds are still swirling above us and the wind is picking up and then it happens. So I'm shaking right now up on this ridge, trying to keep myself in one place. And all of a sudden we just hear this thunderous roar. Oh man. There's a massive avalanche coming down the peak of Hunter. Mount Hunter is less than two miles away and that avalanche is a little too close for comfort. Whoa. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Man, that is nature's power right there. Well, that's not what you like to see when you're up on a mountain. Climbing a mountain in Denali is about respecting the risks, learning how to save yourself in case of an accident, and knowing when it's time to quit. With a blizzard in full force, it's time to get back to camp. And then we're off to our second most favorite adventure, dog sledding. Remember those puppies we met earlier? Well, now they're grown up and ready to show us how people have been getting around Denali for hundreds of years. We've invited actress Sophia Bush to join us. She is all about protecting the environment and as crazy about dogs as we are. You saw them when they were puppies, right? Yes. We did. When they were little guys, it was summertime and they were still rearing to go. Today, we're preparing for our own dog sled trek, and that means learning how to operate the sled and work with the dogs who are the experts. It's basically you want to balance the opposite way of what the sled's going. So if the sled starts sliding to the right, you're gonna to wanna to lean your weight to the left. These dogs live to run, so knowing how to brake is really important. This is what's called the drag brake here. This is what slows the sled down. 
If that's not slowing you down enough, you can use the real brake, which is this big bar right here. Sometimes you have to put two feet on this thing to wow. really dig it in. We're learning that getting the dogs harnessed and hooked up to the sleds is hands down the wildest part of the whole process. You ready to do this? Come on, Gus, let's go. You're gonna be difficult, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. This one now? Yep, and a pop. Getting these dogs attached to the lines is work. Today, each of us will manage our own dog sled team and we'll be going 17 miles into the wilderness and up into the mountains. Here comes the madness. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We gotta stay here for now. Oh, did I do that upside down? I sure did. Do you wanna go run? Come on. I know you wanna run. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! Okay, let's go. Being out here with my own dog team is so surreal. Good job, Junko. Everything is peaceful. The scenery all around us is spectacular. Woo! Oh, it's so fun when one of them looks back here, they're just grinning like, ah! They look so stoked. Woo, there's a tree. Good dogs, good dogs. Oh, coming up to a hill. The terrain out here is constantly changing. Oh yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. That was close. With five sleds and 30 dogs on the trail, we can't expect to see much in the way of wildlife, but we can see the signs. Whoa, moose tracks! Look how big they are! After a few hours, the sun is setting in the sky and we still have our toughest challenge ahead. Our camp is just a half a mile ahead, but it's a half a mile up a mountain. Let's go, dogs. This is where it becomes a real team effort. I have to hop off, and now I'm pushing the sled up with the dogs leading the way. Here's the workout. Go, 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 go. So right now, I'm having to walk a lot of it. Woo, I'm winded. And these guys are just going. I think I have to work out more. Woo. Home stretch. Almost there, guys. Yeah, buddies. Look at that. So we cleared the uphill, which was way harder than I thought it was going to be. All right, we did it. 17 miles, we made it to camp. And honestly, there wasn't a second that these guys were tired. Even now, I'm sure these guys could go for another 15 miles. But man, oh man, that was just incredible. And now it's our turn to take care of them. This has been awesome. We made it. We did it. They made it. <laughs> yeah, these guys made it, yeah. yeah. They were so happy. We did 17 miles today, and it's fun to see how much they love this. And as epic as this was, we still have one more adventure to go, and it starts at night. Our number one all-time favorite adventure is biking 30 miles down the Denali Park Road at midnight. All righty, you ready? Let's do it. Biking around twilight is great because the buses have stopped running. You feel like you have the entire road to yourself. Well, not exactly. Animals are typically more active at dusk, so it increases our chances of spotting wildlife. Basically, we could come around any corner. There could be a moose, there could be a caribou, there could be a grizzly bear. If we come around that corner and we spook a bear, Ooh. we're definitely dealing with the situation. Oftentimes, bears enjoy the same roads and trails that we do. It minimizes the amount of brush that they have to plow through. As always, the best way to stay safe is to constantly make noise so you don't surprise them. Hey, bear. It's just me riding a bike, bear. Oh, man. Is that Denali? I think that is. That's Denali. Oh, that's incredible. That is a beast of a mountain. It may not look like it, but it's well after 10 p.m. and We've just hit a major roadblock. Bear, 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 bear. We've got a bear. He's really close to the road further up. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby, that's a grizzly, man. Are you sure? Yep, you can see the hump. He's right on the road. It's about a mile up, but this guy would be a little too close for comfort if we were up there. I am so glad that we saw him all the way over here. Oh, me too. We're gonna stay right here till this guy is clear from the road. Ultimately, it's one of those things. 
bear's in your path, it's not your path anymore. <laughs> He's walking now, but every so often, he'll stop down and he just starts tearing at the ground. He's digging for roots, digging for rodents. Just trying to get his dinner. But there's also a caribou that's a little bit up the riverbank. Grizzlies eat both plants and animals. They'll prey on caribou or even moose if the situation presents itself. Oh man, they're close to each other. Oh my gosh. Oh, the caribou sees them too, the caribou sees them. They're like 100 yards away from one another, and the bear is kind of coming right towards him. Yeah, he's running. Grizzlies can run up to 30 miles per hour. Right now, he's running away from us and towards the caribou. Do you see him? Yep, he's way up there. So what we're going to do is make our way up the road, keeping our eyes on him all the time, and always keeping a safe distance. Slow and steady on this one. We've got another 10 miles or so until we reach our campsite. Lucky for us, it's all downhill. Woo! Oh my gosh. It's almost midnight right now, and we're looking at Denali as the sun is finally starting to set. Normally, we'd be staring at this beautiful sunset we have on our right, but not here. <laughs> here, all you can look at is this incredible, majestic mountain. It's almost 1 a.m. when we make it to Wonder Lake. I'm so glad that we decided to bike. Yeah. Coming to a place like Denali, you know you're going to walk away with an amazing experience. Today was just a blessing. It was a gift. It was just spectacular. Denali is a park of raw, rugged beauty. Sometimes it's going to pound you, and other times it allows you to sit back and take in one of the most beautiful sights in the world. We hope you get the chance to experience it for yourself. For more information, please check out the links below and feel free to leave a comment. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel where you'll find more travel and adventure tips like this one and full episodes of Rock the Park.